Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you were already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, it is time for one of my favorite videos to film every month. It is time for my monthly reading roundup. If you are new to this video series, it is something that I do every single month and it incorporates a few things. We are going to run through all of the books that I read for the month. We are going to go through my tops and my bottoms, some bookish stats, my haul and unhaul, and at the very end we are going to balance the books to see if I ended up with less books on my physical TBR than I started the month with. I have been considering changing the name of this video from a reading roundup to a reading reset and you'll have to give me your thoughts and feelings on that to see which one you would prefer. But anyway, we are going to go ahead and start with my tops and bottoms for the month. Now I'm going to be honest honest and I really didn't have very many standout books for the month. If you watched my TBR game for the month of May you will know that my TBR game was very very unkind to me and it included a lot of books that I didn't want to read or I wasn't necessarily super excited to read and so there were a lot of DNFs throughout the month of May. There were some that were just pretty mediocre or forgettable reads and there were a couple that I enjoyed but for the most part I didn't necessarily find a new favorite. However if I had to pick my one standout read for the month it would be America's First Daughter by Stephanie Dre and Laura Kamoy. Now last year for the Amazing Readathon I ended up reading My Dear Hamilton by this author duo and I absolutely loved it. It was definitely a chonky historical fiction. I believe it was just at about 700 pages and it became one of my favorite books of the year. Now when I went into this I was a little bit trepidatious just because I don't have as much interest in Patsy Jefferson because that's who this follows. She was the oldest daughter of Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson when he became president he didn't have a wife. He was a widower. So basically Patsy Jefferson was kind of seen as the first daughter or essentially a first lady stand-in. So when I went into this I was a little bit hesitant because because I didn't really have as much investment in her as I did with Eliza Hamilton. But in true Stephanie Dre and Laura Kamoy fashion, they were just able to make Patsy Jefferson come to life on the page. Now, these books are written in what I would classify as kind of an autobiographical narrative format. So this book is told like Patsy Jefferson herself is telling you her story. So you definitely get a really deep in-depth look at Patsy Jefferson and what her life was like growing up as the daughter of Thomas Jefferson and all of the things that she went through. Now, this definitely has some similarities to My Dear Hamilton in that both her and Eliza Hamilton were both incredibly strong women. They both sacrificed a lot for the country and the men that they love. And even though this took me a little bit longer to get into, I absolutely loved it by the end of it. They actually have a new release that just came out or is coming out this year. And I will 100% be getting to it because I just trust these ladies. They are able to paint such a vivid picture of the subjects of their stories and just bring them to life. And by the time that I'm done reading them, I feel like I know them, but at the same time, I'm really sad that I'm never going to know them, if that makes sense. I absolutely loved this. I ended up giving it a 4.5 stars and I will absolutely be reading anything from this duo going forward. Now moving on into my bottoms. This is going to be pretty difficult and even more difficult than you might think considering I did have some DNFs and I had a lot of like three star reads but to be honest I don't really have deep feelings about any of these stories and some of the books that I DNF it's not even because I feel like they're terrible books or anything like that. I just DNF them because they weren't working for me so I'm not disappointed by these stories. I didn't really go into them with any expectations. I just didn't enjoy them as much as I would have liked to enjoy them. If I had to pick my least favorite out of all of the three stars that I read for the month. It was actually The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin, which I read because it was one of your recommendations. I personally read through this and I did not understand why it was so beloved and so hyped. This follows our main character A.J. Fickery and at the start of the story he's kind of like a grumpy person. He runs a bookstore on this island and he is a widower. He lost his wife so he's kind of still in a funk. He's kind of still in his grief and then one day somebody leaves a baby in his bookstore and he ends up raising that baby and it goes from there. It is a very very short read. It's only about like 250 pages. I think I read this in a day and it was just fine. I get why people might like the story just because of its overall message and it was heartwarming and everything like that but I really didn't feel emotionally connected to this at all. I think it was a little bit too short for me to feel emotionally connected to it. I don't feel it was very well developed or flushed out at all. Ultimately I just got done with it and I was like okay what was I supposed to get out of this? This is something that I'm going to forget in five seconds. Like I barely remember anything about it now. I legitimately do not understand why this book is as popular as it is. So do it that way you will. And really that's it y'all. I don't really have very many strong feelings positive or negative about a lot of the books that I read. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly run through all of the books that I read for the month of May and their star ratings and I will also quickly tell you the books that I DNF'd and then we will go ahead and move on to the bookish stats. The very first book that I finished in the month of May was a book called The Good Part by Sophie Cousins which was one of your recommendations. I read that and I gave it a 3.5 stars. I also read I Did It For You by Amy Engel which was also three stars. I did end up finishing Swordcatcher by Cassandra 
Cassandra Clare. I can't remember exactly when I started this. I think I started it at some point in April, but I did finish it in May and sadly I only gave this a three stars. Next I picked up It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover, which is the second book in a duology that began with It Ends With Us. I read this. I really, really enjoyed it and I gave it a four stars. Then I picked up The Plot by Jean Hoff Corliss, which I also gave four stars. Then I read Good Bad Girl by Alice Sweeney, which I gave three stars. Then again, I read Funny Story by Emily Henry, four stars. Then I read Darling Girls by Sally Hepworth, which I actually had a really, really good time with and I gave this a four stars. It's probably closer to like a 3.5 in terms of lasting capacity, but I really enjoyed the overall story of this one. Then I actually picked up A Ghost of Caribou by Alice Henderson. This is one of those books, you know, when you have a series that you really, really love and you have to read the next book, but you're not ready to read it because you don't want the series to end or maybe another book is not out yet. So you're not ready to read this one, but also you're kind of worried that you're going to be disappointed because you're riding the high of the series and you're worried that it's going to bring you down. So I wasn't necessarily emotionally ready to read this one yet. And I feel like that might've impacted my reading experience of this one. This is definitely my least favorite in the series. I absolutely rave about the series. I love it so much. It features Dr. Alex Carter, who is a wildlife biologist, and it's about her conservation efforts. The first book featured wolverines, the second book featured polar bears, and then of course this features caribou. And so she's always almost in a remote location trying to study and observe some type of endangered species to help their plight. And there's always something sinister that is going on. And it's no different in this one. I did still really enjoy it. I gave it a 3.5 stars. I will absolutely be continuing in the series. It just wasn't nearly as strong as the other two books in the series were, but I still really love this series and I would highly recommend. And then I ended the month on a true crime. It's the story called If You Tell, a true story of murder, family secrets, and the unbreakable bond of sisterhood by Greg Olson. This is one that's been sitting on my TBR for a little while. And I went ahead and just decided to go ahead and pick it up. So for this one, I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave it unrated just because I don't tend to love rating nonfiction. But if I am rating it, I want it to be known that I'm not rating the actual experiences of these sisters. I'm rating Greg Olson's portrayal of the story, if that makes sense. And if I were to rate that portrayal, I would say it's probably only a three stars. Uh, this is a very harrowing story, a true crime about a very devious mother and all of the stuff she puts her daughters through and even people in her life who lived with her. Like the things that these people allowed themselves to endure at the hands of this woman is astonishing. And for that reason alone, like this story is absolutely unbelievable. I could not believe some of the things that I was reading in this. But overall, it just felt very long, very drawn out, very repetitive. And overall, I would like lose interest. I would just be ready for it to be done. So definitely an interesting story, but just the way it was told didn't 100% work for me. So I think if I were to rate it, I would settle on maybe like a three, 3.5 stars, but I'm going to leave it unrated for now. And then also really quickly, I did DNF three books in the month of May. I DNF Dark Places by Gillian Flynn, The Authenticity Project by Claire Pooley. I did talk a little bit more about why I DNF'd Dark Places and this in my TBR video. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about that, I will try to remember to leave the TBR video down below. And the last one that I DNF'd was actually Most of All You by Mia Sheridan. This is one that I randomly decided to pick up in the middle of the month. Again, it's another one that's been sitting on my physical TBR. And I really wanted to love this because I absolutely loved Archer's voice by Mia Sheridan. I had a lot of technical issues with that that took that book from like a five star to a four star, but I was still hoping that Mia Sheridan could not get out of the park. And this one unfortunately was not it. This follows our main character, Gabriel, who underwent serious trauma when he was young. He was kidnapped as a boy and he was held hostage. Yes, he experienced sexual assault at the hands of his captor, but he escaped. Years later, he is finding it very, very hard to be close or intimate with anybody. And so he actually goes to a strip club and he meets with a woman named Crystal and he wants to pay her to get close to him. Like he wants to basically sit with her and talk with her and eventually work on being physically close and touching people, if that makes sense. And so you're watching the development of this, but I feel like this went from zero to 100 very, very quickly because the first several chapters of this book, you are kind of following Crystal being hesitant to help Gabriel. Not because she doesn't want to help Gabriel, but because she feels like it's a little bit too intimate and close for her and she's not emotionally ready for something like that. And then something really bad happens to Crystal in this. She is the victim of extreme violence and Gabriel offers Crystal the opportunity to stay with him so that he can take care of her. And again, this is still all very, very early on in the book. And even though there's not even like a hint of a romantic relationship yet, Crystal is still very nervous about Gabriel. She's not sure what to do with Gabriel. She's not very trusting of men. And like I said, she's not very emotionally vulnerable. He's still like, oh my gosh, I'm falling in love with her. And I'm just like, okay, I'm DNFing this. There has not even been a hint that she reciprocates this in any way. They haven't even gone on a serious date, but all of a sudden he's falling in love with her. And I was just like, you know what? I can't, I'm DNFing it. So DNFed it. Now moving on into the bookish stats, there are a couple of things that I'm changing. First of all, I'm no longer including DNFs into the stats. So with the spreadsheet that I use, if I put a book on there and mark a book as DNF, it still keeps track of absolutely everything else. And I really don't want that to be incorporated in my overall stats. I want my stats to be reflected of what I actually finished. Also, it's 
really hard for me to keep track of DNF page count because I listen to most of these books and if I don't have the physical book I can't exactly see where I stop to keep track of the page count. So going forward I'm just going to tell you the books that I DNF'd like I just did. We're not going to incorporate it into the bookish deck. Also I have gone ahead and changed the author status. It used to be where I selected a new to me debut or read before. I'm eliminating debut because I felt like it was a little bit inaccurate because I could potentially be reading an author's debut but I might have read several other books by them before but I'm marking it as a debut because it was their debut but I've technically read them before if that makes sense. So it was a little bit inaccurate and I didn't like that. So going forward I'm only going to track whether an author is new to me or whether or not I've read them before. So now that that housekeeping is out of the way in the month of May I officially completed 12 books which is definitely the lowest reading month that I've had but like I said I DNF'd several. So had I finished the three books that I DNF'd I would be at 15 which is more reflective of what I typically read and out of those books that I completed I read 4,515 pages. Of course it doesn't include all of the DNF'd pages that I read so overall the numbers are a little bit skewed just because of how many books I DNF'd for the month of May. Out of the books I completed I had four three star reads, two 3.5 star reads, four four star reads, and one five star read and then one that I didn't rate and my average rating for the month was a 3.6 and I feel like that's very very reflective of the very mediocre reading month that I had in the month of May. Out of the genres I classified four of the books as contemporary fiction, one as fantasy, fantasy, one as historical fiction, five of them as thrillers, and one of them as true crime. And in terms of format, all 12 of them were considered full-length novels. 11 of them were fully listened to via audiobook, and one of them was immersively read. That was Swordcatcher, so I listened to it as well as read it. In terms of where I sourced those audiobooks, three of them were from Audible, two of them were from Everand, six of them were from my library, and one of them was from Spotify. I need to go ahead and add Spotify as a category on here, but for right now it is just other. For audience, of course, all 12 of these books were geared towards an adult audience to nobody's surprise as I've moved almost completely away from YA. In terms of author status, out of all 12 books that I completed, only one of them was by an author that was new to me. All of the other 11 were from authors that I had read from before. And then finally, in terms of publication year, I had two that were published this year in 2024, four of them that were published in 2023, two of them that were published in 2022, one in 2021, one in 2019, one in 2016, and one in 2014. All right, now it is time to go ahead and move on into the book haul. But of course, before we do that, we have to go ahead and establish a baseline for where my physical TBR currently sits. So at the end of it, we can see if my physical TBR is less than what it was when I started the month of May. So after reviewing the last roundup that I did, I ended the month with 47 books on my physical TBR. Out of the 15 books that I either completed or DNF'd in the month of May, 10 of those books were actually books that were already on my physical TBR prior to the month of May. However, Swordcatcher by Cassandra Andrew Claire was not included in my TBR numbers just because I was actively already in the middle of it. So we are not including that in the count. So 47 minus nine would bring us down to 38 physical books on my TBR. Now, starting with the haul, this is actually going to be very quick. I hardly have any books to talk to you about. This first book is not necessarily a haul, but it's an un unhaul. The Girl from Widow Hills by Megan Miranda. I've mentioned this multiple times on my channel, but I broke up with Megan Miranda because I've been reading her for years. And for the most part, I find her books to be very mediocre and forgettable. I'm always really intrigued by her synopsis and for the most part when I'm reading her stories I'm having a good time like there's nothing egregiously terrible but when I get to the end of them they're not necessarily anything memorable either if that makes sense. So I have not really been super impressed with a lot of her books. Some of them yes I really really enjoyed and then because of a project that I'm doing I had to get her newest release called Daughter of Mine and I loved it. It is definitely my favorite Megan Miranda to date. I think I gave that book like a 4.5 stars just because the vibes of it were immaculate and I really enjoyed the overall story of it and so because of that I've decided that I probably will go ahead and continue to read Megan Miranda. And this is one that I had on my physical TBR and I decided to unhaul it after I broke up with her. And so when I saw that I still had it and I hadn't sold it on Pango, I went ahead and just plucked it right out of my unhaul pile. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this back to my physical TBR. Then of course, really quickly, I have my book of the month selections. So for the month of May, I selected Middle Tide by Sarah Crouch. This is a thriller that is set in the Pacific Northwest, which I'm really excited about because I very much enjoy a thriller set in the Pacific Northwest because I find it to be very atmospheric. It says, in this gripping and intensely atmospheric debut, disquiet descends on a small town after the suspicious death of a beautiful young doctor, with all clues pointing to the reclusive young man who abandoned the community in chase of big city dreams, but returned for the first love he left behind. So I'm really intrigued by this. I will certainly be getting to it as soon as I can. My second selection was The Return of Ellie Black by Amico Jean, which I'm very, very excited to get to, and I will actually be reading this next. It will be the very first book that I used to satisfy a sightseeing prompt for the Amazing Readathon, and I'm very excited about it. It says, A Missing Girl Returns. But that isn't the end of the
the story. It's only the beginning. I have never read anything by Amiko Jean. I've heard a lot of great things about her like young adult contemporary. So I'm very, very excited to give this a shot. I of course also had to pick up my own copy of Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Meyer because I absolutely adored the story way more than I thought that I would. So as soon as I got done with it, I went on Pango. I found the copy with these lovely sprayed edges and I'm so glad to have this as part of my collection. Then next, I actually have the Fairy Loot book for the month of May, which is Evocation by S.T. Gibson. I've heard a lot of amazing things about S.T. Gibson. I've never actually read anything by her, but when I read the synopsis of this, I thought that it sounded really interesting. And so I went ahead and kept it. And so this is my first S.T. Gibson experience and I'm actually currently reading this book. And so because of that, I'm not adding it to my physical TBR because I actually hope to finish this today. But even though I'm 40% of the way through it, I don't even think I really understand what this is about. It says, when a family curse threatens the life of David, a medium, he will turn to the only person he's ever trusted, his sorcerer ex-boyfriend, Reese, which means he will have to open his heart to Moira, Reese's astrologer wife. Meet David, Reese, and Moira for the first time as they navigate magic riddled Boston through hierarchical secret societies, familial bonds from beyond the grave, and much more in this gorgeous, richly imagined novel. But this is the beautiful fairy loot edition. Look at that foiling. We have the naked hardcover with more gold foiling on it. There is the back cover, and there are the sprayed edges. And here are some of the end pages, and they are different on the back as well. So far, I'm enjoying it, and I really do hope to finish it today. And then the very last book that I have to haul is the Fairy Loot Special Edition of Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. So the cover is pretty much the same. You have these cool sprayed edges. You have the beautiful naked hardcover. I absolutely love that. There's the spine, nothing on the back. There's also a reverse dust jacket. So I'm thinking about maybe putting it on my shelves with the reverse dust jacket. It's going to be hard for you to see, but I'll just kind of like hold it up here in front of my face. So yeah, I have obviously read this one. So that will not be added to my TBR. Oops, actually, I almost forgot. Funny Story by Emily Henry is one that I hauled in May as well. I actually just received this in the mail. So this is definitely one that I hauled in the month of May, but of course I've already read it. So it's not being added to my TBR. Now let's go ahead and talk about the books that I am unhauling. So of course, because I DNF'd it, I am going to be unhauling Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. And I've also made the decision to unhaul Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. I read this and I really didn't enjoy it. The only reason why I was keeping it is because I had Gone Girl on my shelves and I was planning on reading Dark Places. They were all book of the month editions. And so I was going to have the entire collection on my shelves, assuming of course that I liked Dark Places, which I didn't because I DNF'd. I've decided that Gillian Flynn is not for me. I will go ahead and keep my Gone Girl copy on my shelves, but I'm not going to be keeping either one of these. So these will be going on Pango. I will of course also be unhauling Most of All You by Mia Sheridan because I DNF'd this one. Same thing with The Authenticity Project by Claire Pooley. I DNF'd this one. I do not need to keep it on my shelves. And then the very last book that I'm unhauling and the only other one that I need to take from my TBR numbers is Long Shot by Kennedy Ryan. I mentioned this over a few videos in the past, but I was planning on doing this big video project where I read viral spicy talk book talk books to see if I actually felt that they were worth the hype. A lot of these books were actually books that I was at least somewhat genuinely interested in reading. I tend to not read books just for content's sake. Like I really need to be interested in the books that I'm going to be reading for content. And some of them were actually going to be second chance authors. So I wanted to give the authors a second or even a third chance to see if maybe I could really like them because they're so popular. I feel like I'm missing something. And that was going to be the case with Kennedy Ryan. I've only attempted one Kennedy Ryan in the past, which I DNF'd, but this is a very, very popular book. So when I was going to do that video series, this is one that I decided that I was going to read and I have since scrapped that project. Some of the books that were going to be part of that project that I actually did attempt, most of them I feel like I have DNF'd and unhauled. Some of them I did unhaul already without reading and I think that this is just going to be the case with this one as well. I'm not going to give it a try. I in theory am a romance girly. I love a good romance but I need very very specific things in my romances and a lot of romances do not deliver for me. I just don't think that in general for the most part I'm a typical romance type of reader so this one is going to go. All right and then that would bring my TBR number to 39 if my math is correct. If not, I will be sure to have the correct number down on the screen for you, of course. So my TBR is definitely dwindling and I expect it to dwindle much further after the month of June, just because a lot of the books that I have on my radar for the Amazing Readathon in terms of sightseeing prompts are all from my physical TBR. If I can get a lot of those read in the month of June, I could get my physical TBR closer to 30 by the end of June. I do know that I have like book of the month books coming and a couple of other things, but I don't really plan on hauling any other books for the month of June. This is exciting. My physical TBR is definitely lowering. In fact, I'm looking at my TBR now. A handful of these books are actually like chunky fantasies that I cannot read immediately. I have to immersively read them. So in theory, lowering my physical TBR even further by the end of the year is not impossible. And I'm very much looking forward to that. All right, everybody, that is it. This was a very, very long video. I've been filming forever. It's going to be a nightmare to edit. Please, of course, comment down below and let me know some of your tops and bottoms for the month. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me an American flag emoji in honor of America's first daughter, which was my favorite book of the month of May by far. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you 
haven't already, I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with any books that I might talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all.